All right, I showed you one way how to change colors. I'm going to demonstrate another. Sometimes when you get a work that's hand dyed, you can find a color that you can use all the way through, like a light gray perhaps, or a black, some kind of a neutral brown, but sometimes that'll also wash away your color. So how can you create a bolder color when you're weaving? One way to do that is to pick the color that's closest, and of course this case I have the green that I've been weaving with, so it really helps the uh, dark green, you kind of can, I'm not sure you can see it in the bottom, but there's green down there. And then I'm going to now next go on to some red, and I'm going to weave with red. So I'm going to eventually come up here and start weaving with red, but I said eventually. I'm, gonna, I'm going to have a transition, just like I showed you earlier. This time I'm going to do it at both ends rather than just one end. So since I've been weaving with the green, I'm gonna to switch to the red and I'm going to kind of gently introduce the red and then I will weave with all red at the end. I'm just gonna advance the uh, fabric a little bit, make sure I have a nice tension, and I'm doing a tabby weave. And in the earlier demonstration, you could see that at once in a while, I wasn't catching the, the end thread. I'm gonna to try to pay a little more attention to that this time. So I'm going to do, well, I'm going to do two, two shots of the green. And now I'm going to introduce the red. And I'm just going to do one of the red. And I tuck it in. That's how I particularly start. I like to go on the edge there and start it. So I have one. And again, in this case, I am going to weave five of the green. And this time again, I'm paying a little more attention to the selvages. One. See on this one here. Okay, we're okay. Two. Three. Four. And five. I could also plan on catching this thread too if I didn't want to carry it over. Okay, now I'm going to do one of the red. And we're now going to go back to the green. And what I mean by catching... What I can do here is make sure I wrap that around, and now I've caught that red one, and it's gonna be carry on. Some people literally put their shuttle up here and do that. I like to do it this way. So now I'm gonna do four, one, two, and again, wrap it around is what I do. We all have different ways of doing it. Three and four. Okay, now I'm going to do one of the red, and now we're back to, and I have to catch that end thread, two, three. One, two, three. Well, actually, I think I did five in the last one, so let's just throw one more. Let's do four. Now we'll do the red. And we'll do three green. And when you're finished, you really don't see or count those. It's kind of a nice gradual changeover. Do one red, and now we'll do two green. One red, and now we'll start going back and forth every other one, just for a little bit. And again, I'm watching the edge there, make sure I get, get that last thread. it around. You can do this as many times as you're comfortable with. And then we'll watch what's happening and decide how much farther you want to do that. So I'm going to stop there and now I'm going to go in reverse. I'm going to do two red. So I did one red, two red, and one green. And now it'll be three red. Again, watching that edge. Two, three, and a green. Now it'll be four. One. Wrap that around. Make sure we there we go. Get that tangled up a little bit. Sometimes that happens. Two. Three, 
four, one green. Okay, and I'm getting a little close to the reed, so I'm going to advance. One of the things I've talked about in some of my other videos, your selvages sometimes start to go wonky if you go a little too close to the edge there. So I just did one green. I had done, I did four red. Now it's back to three red. And now one green. Whoops, hang on. Looks like I made a little mistake here. All right, we did, now I need to go one, two, three, four. Oops. Four, and we're going, I'm increasing now. I was back to the decreasing there. And I'm going to do a five. And now I'm going to do one green. And five red again. Again, there's no, you can decide how many you want to do. So it looks like you can even go six or seven if you would like, if you want to. Wrap that around. Again, you gotta kind of make sure it catches there. Four, five. Now I'm gonna do one more green. That's the last green. And we snip it, tuck it in. And we will be leaving with all red now. There's still a little bit of green showing. But now I know the next section. All red. Again, we tuck it in, we add the next bobbin, overlap it, it'll start to go in a little bit, and just keep on weaving. So there you have it. You can see how the transition happens, it goes from the dark or the, the green to the red. Now I'll weave red another about a foot and a half. These are going to be placemats. It's all cotton, 100% cotton. It was a hand dyed warp. So if you're purchasing a, a warp or you dye one, this is another technique you could use to get a bolder, brighter color. Another reason why I like to have longer transitions or longer sections, when you have the short, short sections, it's a lot more changing of your yarn. You could also, when you're dyeing your warp, if you're doing it yourself, you could dye several skeins to match each section, which is another way to make really a bright and bold color. And again, do this gradual changing of colors. So there's something else to add to your toolkit. And thanks for watching.